Hey everybody, this is Justin here with Alternative Drummer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Audacity 3.2. Actually, we're up to like 3.2 point something now. Let's see. 3.2.3. Uh, today is December 29th, uh, 2022. Some of you might have even come to my channel uh, because of some of my previous Audacity tutorials. So sorry it's taken me this long to do another one. But actually, since this version of Audacity 3.2, there are some huge updates and Audacity is really, really becoming uh, much more advanced. So I wanted to show some of those uh, to you guys out there and just give you my thoughts on the new version of Audacity as a whole. Now, if you're wondering how I got a dark theme, everybody always asks me that. So I'm just gonna show you that right here in the beginning very quickly. So we're just gonna go to edit and then preferences. Excuse me. <clears throat> And then right here under interface and in your preferences, you have the option to change the theme to dark. And there's also another one that I like is this classic theme that kind of looks like the old version of, of Audacity. And actually I'm gonna change that theme back because that's already hurting my eyes. <laughs> I can't do light themes. The only thing I like are dark themes. And I think a lot of people are like that these days. Um, I wish the, you know, the window border was also dark. It just looks a little weird, but Beggars can't be choosers, you know, we're getting this awesome piece of software for free and maybe eventually they'll get to, you know, polishing these themes a little better, but for the time being, that's still fine. And we're going to talk about a lot of the cool new stuff that Audacity has. You may notice that we no longer have that double arrow tool. Uh, the reason being is we no longer need it because now you can actually trim and move waveforms all within Audacity's default tool. So you can see here, I'm just dragging that. I don't have to change tools or anything. So that's really nice. Uh, that just makes it much easier to work with and faster. Audacity was already a really fast editor, but this just increases the speed even more. Another thing that's new up here in our main toolbar area is this audio setup button. And underneath that dropdown, we have all kinds of options. There's uh, your host, which you can select MME, Windows Direct Sound, Wasapi, uh, whatever you want, uh, you know, to run as your audio driver. No, you cannot use ASIO in Audacity still. This is not due to Audacity not being able to do that. It has something to do with the licensing of uh, Steinberg, the makers of ASIO technology. Since Audacity is an open source free piece of software, they can't include the ASIO driver within Audacity. I know it sucks because Audacity would really be a million times better if they did have the ASIO driver out there. Somebody needs to create an open source low latency driver for Windows. That's really you know, what we need to have next because ASIO is really the only option for low latency in Windows. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, what that means is low latency audio drivers in Windows are actually quite important if you want to do anything in real time recording environments. Uh, like if you're trying to play real-time MIDI, and sorry, I'm wearing gloves. It's because I have psoriasis on my hands and I'm just trying to let them heal a little bit. But the low latency audio drivers are highly important for low latency. I mean, that's in the name. But what that means is like, say I plug in a MIDI controller into my computer and I want to play music and hear what I'm playing in the software without a noticeable delay, you need a real-time audio driver like ASIO. Um, Linux has the jack driver and Mac has their own port audio driver, but Windows, the only one that works in Windows that's truly low latency, as far as I know, is ASIO, and that is a Steinberg technology. Steinberg are the makers of Cubase, which is commercial recording software. Anyway, that's my explanation of that. Hopefully that made sense. So next we have our playback device and you could quickly choose you know, where you want the sound to come out of. And I, I really like having this drop down menu. This is nice. So I can select any of my, you know, my echo show, my speakers, my Microsoft sound mapper, all that stuff's right there. And same with the recording device. You can quickly change your recording devices by just going to this menu right here. You can also change your channels. So if you want to change from mono to stereo, you can do that right there. If you want to get into the full audio settings, there's also a shortcut for that right here at the end of this menu, which basically does the same thing of what is available in that drop down menu. However, the latency compensation uh, setting is also right here. Now, back on what I was saying before about the low latency audio driver, since Audacity doesn't have one, uh, you're going to get latency while you're recording. However, you can set up latency compensation so when you overdub tracks, they match up 
you know, they sync up correctly in the timeline. And the way to do that is actually by measuring the latency on your computer. I've already created a highly detailed video on how to do this a few years ago. So I'll just post a link down below to that video. I'm not gonna go over that here. All right, next of our new buttons up here is this share audio button. Now what this does, if we click here, and what this does is when you click that button, it brings up a prompt or you can publish either public or unlisted. And what it will do is upload your recording to audio.com. So we just say continue. And now it's preparing the audio. This is a multi-track session, so this might take a little while to upload. Okay, and then once it finishes uploading, you can just click on go to my file. And then that takes you to the page where I've just published whatever recording you had in Audacity. And I really like this feature. This is really great. So this just makes it super easy to publish things online or to share them with your friends. <laughs> And that's just really great. Very cool new feature. Okay, so another huge feature that has been added to Audacity 3.2 is the ability to use real-time effects. Now what that means, if we click this button right here that says effects, it brings up this other sidebar here. And what this does is basically allows you to, uh, it's essentially an effects rack that you could put on a channel without having to process the audio destructively. Like in the past uh, with Audacity, every time you wanted to process the audio, add effects or anything, as you know, you had to, or you probably know, you had to highlight the audio, then click process or, you know, what, okay or whatever. And then it would change that piece of audio basically forever. Um, but now you have the option to add plugins in a stack, basically the way you can in a professional DAW. In addition to that, you can also use VST3 plugins now, which is really nice. The only thing is though, some plugins don't seem to work in Audacity. Now, I don't know if that's because of the way those plugins work with the copyright protection and things like that. Like the ones that I cannot get to work in here are all of my Waves plugins because Waves is a little weird the way it does its authorization. And I think that that's probably why they don't work in here, which is a shame for me because I use a lot of Waves plugins. I have a lot of those. I've purchased many over the years and I have the little eye lock and just have been you know, basically keeping that with me since I still had a Mac G4 that I was working on. So that's how long I've been using some Waves plugins. That being said, it's still really cool that we at least have the option to do uh, real-time effects in a non-destructive manner. So let's go ahead and play with this bass a little bit. Do I have any EQs in here? I think in my Air plugins. And the Air plugins work really well, actually, in Audacity. And that's nice because these are pretty good too. Parametric EQ, here we go. All right now if we just now it actually loaded up even though you didn't see anything but you can see it right here if we tap this button that'll open up our window so let's take a listen and what we could do is actually solo the bass and now we can play with the eq settings in the bass and i already kind of like it but let's just add a little bit low end i guess Maybe a bit of top end too. Okay, on solo. Now let's play with the drums a little bit. Let's add an effect on drums. Okay, for the drums, let's add a little bit of distortion on here. Let's see what this sounds like. I actually like that. Yeah, it's kind of like a lo-fi mellow jam. And I think, you know, I'm just playing around, but that's really nice that you can do this now. This is a project that I recorded in Audacity uh, probably two years ago or so. And there's, if you're interested, actually there's a full video of me recording this song. And I think it got a little more involved in this. I, th I think this must be an older uh, mix. I think I added more stuff eventually, but maybe not. But it's on the channel. I'll try to post a link down below, if, you know, while I'm uploading this. Real-time effects is a big, big improvement in Audacity. Now Audacity technically really isn't fully a DAW, a digital audio workstation. It is more of a wave editor. However, it's becoming almost 
a DAW. You can use it pretty much as a DAW if you wanted to, except for there's not really any MIDI support, but if you're working with mostly audio, you could record all in Audacity. You know, it's 100% free. And now that we have these real-time effects and non-destructive editing, that just makes it even better. And for everybody out there that, you know, doesn't want to spend money on recording, you could, you know, really get some great sounding recordings out of Audacity. And there's also a bunch of free VST plugins out there too. You don't have to buy the ones. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of resources of where to download uh, free VSTs online. Uh, one of the best places to look is a website called KVR, and you can actually search by license and search all the free ones. And you can find tons of stuff uh, to run within Audacity and ba basically build yourself just a really cool free uh, recording workstation, you know, by downloading stuff from the internet. <laughs> Pretty nice. So anyway, that's my review of Audacity. Hopefully you guys found it educational and helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload new content. And I'll see you all really soon. Have a great day. Yeah.